One of the interesting aspects of what we're making is street art. And street art is temporary by its nature. The act of creating, the act of this, in this moment in time, we did this. I think that's the lasting impact to know that at any point in time, you can make even a small difference. I'm Bill Sapalis. I'm a longtime Tribeca resident. When COVID hit, I saw so many restaurants shutting down, which was heartbreaking to me. I saw some restaurants starting to take advantage of building outdoor structures. And this is coming off of the summer Black Lives Matter movement in Soho, where the artists took to the streets and they painted all the boarded up plywood and a light bulb went off for me. It's just plywood. Like we could do that to the, help the restaurants. Put some art where the restaurants are, help them create some visual interest, little life back in the neighborhood. All the art galleries shut down during COVID too. So they need, they need a venue to show their work. If I could help two restaurants, that would be great. If I could help more, that would be great. I didn't imagine the interest that I would have. So we're here at the Reed Street Pub and Kitchen, and we're here with artist Misfit NYC. I knew I was gonna do three different pitches, and I just wanted it all to flow into each other with the character. Oh, you can hear me, I don't have to yell. With the character of New York. Well, it started off with the bridge and just kept it going. The music was here, and we went into like the city climbing out of the wave. I was gonna get into some bottles over here, but I just, a foaming bottle and just floated into Steppenwolf, born to be wild, you know? I was very, very into, uh, into volunteering. Uh, it just uh, was an exciting project for a very, a very important cause, and the cause being to kind of create and, and, and make some of these spots look beautiful. The Dark Horse was the first restaurant or pub to participate in the Neighborhood Curbside Canvas Project. When I started the project, I had to reach out to the restaurant managers and owners that I knew first and foremost. And I reached out to Shane and he said, oh, we'd love to do it. He goes, and I have an artist who's one of our regulars. I got a call probably a day later and said, Bill, you have to run down here because Ford, he's already out here painting. Ford Kroll is a symbol and hieroglyphics artist. We hadn't done one yet. We didn't know what to expect. And it was came out pretty remarkable. There's some really beautiful images that I really like. I always like faces, so anytime a face looks back at me like this, I really get get jazzed about. It really is something out of the ordinary when you're walking by all this gray and black and concrete to see something alive like this, especially during COVID. This work, as you can see, is uh, again, um, including simple geometric shapes and vibrant colors. The reaction I was receiving from people walking by, looking at the piece, that made me also feel very happy. And these very special times, I felt that it's a really great feeling to contribute to make the environment nicer looking and um, hopefully uplifting the people's mood. I made a flyer and I literally went on my bike to every restaurant in the neighborhood just saying, look, I'm a neighbor. I hate what's happening here. I just want to help. The flyer was really telegraphic. It was literally a raw pop-up a before and after. And I think that they could see that and say, oh, I understand immediately. And the next question, of course, is, well, how much is it going to cost me? Because that's, that's what they need to know. And I said, I'm not getting paid anything for this. The artists will do it on a volunteer basis as long as you feed them and you pay for their supplies. I think the, the, the nicest surprise is hearing from neighbors. You know, they understand the value of little small baby step gestures to get to a, a bigger, better place. So I've gotten a lot of really good feedback. We're here at Bubby's Pie Company. Bubby's is one of the long-standing neighbors here. It's a no-brainer, really. It was just something that I totally 
I'm amazed that Bill's doing. You know, finding a place to put art is outside is difficult, and uh, there is a feeling that is generated when people are mulling about and, and having fun, you know, and somebody thoughtfully making the place look beautiful with something to say and do. I, I think that the response is, has been positive, and I spent a lot of time in the neighborhood, and I think it's amazing. It really made these sort of makeshift things look nice. So this is a sushi restaurant. So we had one Japanese artist who did these Japanese landscapes. What was really nice is that she came with her mom. So her mom was her assistant and she helped her paint some of these. Here at Homemade by Mariam, we had a pair of artists that had never worked with each other, but they wanted to work with each other. And restaurant Mark Forgione found artist Rachel Wren. She came and she did this really beautiful, elegant uh, stripe work. Weather Up is a cocktail lounge, and so I found an artist, her name is Tato Roboto. So she does all these sort of funky little robot designs. Once I make the match, the artist is supposed to come to the restaurant, meet with the restaurant tour, get a sense of the menu, the vibe, the clientele, and then channel that through their particular art style and hand. The longer term goals of the project are to have volunteers who are vested in their neighborhoods all over the city unpack this in their neighborhoods. We are in lovely Astoria, Queens. This is our first foray in Queens. It's March. Luckily, we've had a couple of really warm days. The snows are gone, and we are able to get the artists back out and working. The experience with the outdoor structures has, you know, has been a blessing. We reached out to Bill and found some local artists, and it, it's, it's, it's a great sense of community in that the, both the artists are local. It makes you feel hopeful. You know, we're, we're coming hopefully around in the turn with COVID and, and, and this decimating year for the restaurant industry. And to see like these bright, colorful pictures, it's great to see it. I think it's very beneficial to the, to the restaurants who like really need the attention to get like them back on their two feet and artists to get exposure. The kind of art I make is uh, very uh, illustrative, I would say. I use a lot of characters. It's amazing. The, the experience of like having my first mural up on like this huge wall and like on this side, it's, it's, it's amazing. So I grew up in a restaurant family. My grandfather started a restaurant down in Baltimore in the 50s, and we had that for four generations probably over 40 some family members all went through that restaurant working there. It paid for all of our college educations, all the grandkids college educations. Food and restaurants are part of life in New York. It's part of the adventure of living in New York, of tasting of the entire world boiled down into these small little island. And so it hurts us all when even one of them closes. It brings people together, because I think art brings people together and it makes people happy and it just like inspires them. So I think it's gonna bring a lot of culture and inspiration to the neighborhood. I'm just very excited to see how the Curbside Canvas Project continues to grow and just take over all of New York City area. So since the Tribeca Project, we have four restaurants, installations in Park Slope. We've got one in the village, one in Hell's Kitchen, one in Upper West Side, one in Union Square, and we've got another eight underway in the next month from Astoria into some of those areas. I want to help restaurants, but I want to help neighborhoods. And it, it only becomes a neighborhood thing when more and more restaurants within a footprint start doing this so that the exposure becomes a happening or a movement. The, the biggest thing that matters is neighbor helping neighbor. And, and seeing that and understanding that and helping us know that we're not islands within this giant island of, of New York, right? We're, we're all connected. I think COVID has taught us that.